Hi everyone, I'm Swift, and today I'm going to be talking about AFK Journey's latest hero, Florabelle. As I've mentioned in the past, Fox and I are huge gamers, and AFK Journey is the latest game to fully capture our attention. While I have never played its predecessor, AFK Arena, I am loving AFK Journey. Because I am so busy and wildly ADHD, I'm always on the hunt for a phone game with an AFK style, but rarely do they hold my attention. Until now. See, AFK Journey has the awesome added benefit of having beautiful art, awesome characters, and in-depth lore with a mystery to solve. All the ingredients needed for me to become completely obsessed. And because the latest hero happens to be a wilder, my favorite faction, I simply have to tell you all about her. The next hero to join Merlin on their journey is Florabelle, a wind whisperer and school teacher, and she is beautiful. So let's talk about her. Spoilers ahead for AFK Journey. Florabelle is a teacher at the Jade Lake Academy, a school you visit during the story while clearing the corruption from the Dark Forest. Build-wise, Florabelle has three bulb sprites that she summons that each have their own weapon, one with a bow, one with a lance, and one with a club. It looks like she focuses each one in turn, depending on which move she's using while the other sprites continue to deal more damage. The sprites are initially summoned with the casting of their particular move. The way AFK Journey works, it's best to have a team built up of predominantly heroes from one faction, so naturally we want to look at how these abilities might play in with the other wilder characters. Now, I am no number-crunching hardcore team builder type, but I am pretty okay at figuring out what works. And I admittedly haven't summoned her yet, so a lot of this is guesswork. Humor me. In lore, Florabelle and Parisa are former classmates, and Parisa followed Florabelle around everywhere before coming into herself. So it makes sense that Parisa, who focuses on buffing attack and ranged DPS, will probably work nicely as a duo midlighter with Florabelle. I am curious how Parisa's floral inspiration buff will play with Florabelle, since it buffs one ally. I assume it'll technically buff Florabelle herself, and that since the bulb sprites are her summons, it'll buff them as well? Which, depending on how squishy they are, could make them little killing machines. She is such a good teacher. Greeny Danny as the Wilder Tank is a great tank option and will be able to draw aggro away from the little sprite killers, but also can immobilize enemies allowing for the sprites to better focus their attacks. For a healer, I'd recommend Hewen over Damien. Hewen heals all allies at once, while Damien focuses on the weakest ally first. Because there are several extra little guys to keep alive, Hewen is better suited to keeping them happy, while Damien will probably get overwhelmed. That leaves us with two slots, which could nicely be an additional ranged DPS like Leica or Brian, or a melee option like Eren. Brian and Eren both have control skills that allow them to further immobilize the enemy team, making it easier for the sprite squad to squash their foes. For non-wilder options, of which I would never have more than two, unless I was building a different faction team and having Florabelle as the ult, I'm inclined to say Lucius is probably a good pick. His ult grazes a shield to all nearby allies and would help to keep those little spritelings alive and killing. An alternative healer to Hewen would be Smokey and Mirky, assuming the aroma buff spreads to Florabelle summons. Rowan in theory could work, but his potion drop based healing could suffer with too many extra characters to manage. Carolina with her frost powers can help immobilize enemies, and I honestly suspect that any control character would be a good match. For complete summon chaos, you could go Cecia and just watch the enemy be overwhelmed by too many little guys. That's always a valid strategy in my book. And in that instance, I'd use Hewen as a second Wilder and Thorin for tank, and then fill in with either Wilders or Graveborn depending on what your preference is. Now, if all of this crashes and burns and is horrible, I apologize. Like I said, I'm no expert. But I try, and if it works out, great! What I am good at recognizing is a great design and character concept. Now, right off the bat, I'm reminded of Peony and Mirabella's from Fire Emblem Heroes. Unlike them, however, Florabelle's design and personality actually match the flower she's connected to. Like seriously, Peony, how are those flowers in your hair supposed to be peonies? At least Mirabilis has the right ones in her hair, but then she has the roses and the big round skirt, even though she's named after a trumpet-shaped flower. Florabelle, meanwhile, has a bell-shaped skirt, like her flower, the bell flower. Her hair also has bell flowers in it, and she carries with her a wand of bell flowers. She isn't just vaguely flower-themed, she picks a specific flower and sticks with it. Also, unlike Peony and Mirabilis, Florabelle's flower symbolism actually matches who she is completely. Most obviously, a bell resembles a school bell, and since Florabelle is a teacher, it's an adorable match. Snow bells, which are wide and white, like the bells in her hair, are symbols of sympathy for those who struggle, hope, innocence, the ability to overcome challenges, and the ability to achieve great things, which are all great things for a teacher to have. A more standard bell flower is associated with fairies and ancient woodlands, which also fits in with her flower fairy theming. They are symbols of bravery, gratitude, humility, and love. It's a perfect pick for the sweet-hearted school teacher who boldly fights at your side. 
As you can imagine, Fox was completely geeked out by the properly used flower symbolism and summoned her flora bell the moment she was available. And also, also, unlike Peony and Mirabilis, Flora Bell's existence and place in the story isn't bogged down by terrible writing that makes me hate life itself, which is a great win. Then the colors in her design are just lovely. Her shades of pink and green use complementary colors which make them immediately nice to look at. The shapes in her design are balanced smoothly, with the large shapes of her braids helping her bulbous skirt look more natural. She isn't overly cluttered, but she's detailed enough, and she manages to look like her own unique character in spite of reminding me of two others. It's just fantastic. Florabel is the perfect example of a simple, sweet character who succeeds due to excellent theming and design choices, and I'm looking forward to adding her to my team. If you're looking for a fun game to pass the time with, I super recommend you check out AFK Journey. I'll be putting a download link in the description below, and we'll likely be making more videos about the game later down the road. Thanks for watching. See you next time.